You know, one of the things about the Goodwood Festival of Speed is just pacing yourself over the whole four days. And we've spent a couple of days now wandering around the paddocks, having a look at some really interesting cars, talking to some fascinating people. It's not just the cars, however, that start here because there are literally tens, if not hundreds, of well-known drivers here. And one of those was Richard Atwood, winner of the 1971 Le Mans 24-hour race. And he's driving up the hill, not in any old car, but in the car he won the race with. Richard Atwood, and uh, once again reunited with your, uh, your famous Porsche 917. Um, how does it feel to get back to the car after all this time? Uh, actually, funny enough, it doesn't feel any different at all. Um, <laughs> this car's come from the factory just for this event. Um, uh, the fact that they've got a, because it's 50 years of 917, they've got a lot of cars there all lined up, and this has come out of that line just for here. And I think um, they've probably been, instead of pushing it, they've been driving it. So, so we try to do something with the plugs. Hopefully they're going to work better uh, than yesterday, because we've all fouled up. Uh, so we'll see but I'm um, trying to keep it clean. So we're, we're pushing it up here, so we're not driving it here. But it must be, must be strange to be sitting, it must be like an old pair of socks or, or slippers, mustn't it? Um, well, I've, I've been here many times at yeah. 907, um, and uh, I drove one uh, for a program, a uh, Grand Tour program in October Spain last year, which is actually the one behind me, number 21. And so uh, it's not like I'm, uh, unfamiliar with it even in recent times so it's a uh, very familiar car and uh, yeah I spent a lot of time in that <laughs> you certainly did that when you when you look back now and see how these cars are, are held and revered and, and almost worshipped as being famous race cars were you aware of making history then no um, none of us were uh, there was no historic scene uh, there was no value to cars much uh, when they've been finished with and um, they were obsolete mm -hmm. and of course uh, at the end of 71 the 5 litre formula for sports cars finished everything become, became 3 litres that's when I retired anyway um, because I thought it was going to be less interesting um, but so uh, the factory just to give you an example they sold everything out of uh, work, work one the, the, the main workshop there and uh, they sold everything to America and they made a bit of an error because uh, two Le Mans winners just shows you how it could happen also were in that uh, package and uh, yeah they were and um, so that gives you some idea of, the, of what value was put on the cars and it was sold as a job lot there were complete engines and gearboxes and suspension parts a whole lot of stuff sold to Vasek Polak and uh, so he's over time he sold lots of those uh, bits off so he did very well out of it nicely thank you <laughs> yeah, yeah and, and that's quite surprising because even then a Le Mans winner was something to covet and to enjoy well uh, it, it, it's become much more yeah. valuable and famous after the event and we're now you know 50 years nearly after the event and um, you know uh, in motorsport you're always looking Red. to the future not the past if you want to make a good yeah. performance so Porsche actually pulled out of um, uh, endurance racing for that for that short time afterwards and then they went back to it and started winning again so they were proving a point uh, right through the history really and uh, you know they've won I don't know how many they've won now quite a lot yeah. most more than anybody else anyway and um, so the, really they were just looking they've done that program is finished so let's get on to the next thing and that, that's how things were thought of there and, and was the was working with the Porsche factory as precise and detailed as we all I expect and imagine it to be and were they as as, pre as precise and uh, vigilant were, yes oh yes oh it's a serious stuff yeah. uh, and these cars were seriously quick 
um, when the first 917 went to Le Mans, I don't think anything had gone truly over 200 miles an hour. And we were doing 235, so uh, it was a serious bit of kit. We did a program uh, with uh, Concord, called Concord, this particular one at um, Yeovilton. Uh, flew in the same year as the 917 uh, came on the scene and we did a program together there and uh, you know they were both very specialist uh, yeah. cars in their own way and uh, so I, I can assure you that the fine detail could mean the difference of uh, something breaking or not so they were they were I think the preparation was was just as good the cars were much more simple so you, you can, they are turnkey operations where a lot of the modern cars you see starting out with the paddock, they're more modern. They're quite a p pantomime, you know, so uh, <laughs> it was really like a road car type scenario. Yeah. And, and there is a key to it, you just heard it. Yeah. There is actually a key? Yeah, the key and it, and it starts, it's the ignition and the start. Yeah, just like a road car. Well, that puts it all in perspective, Richard Edward, thank you very much. I, I hope you enjoy your, uh, your trip up the hill. Thank you. We'll see what happens. Yeah. <laughs>